All right, welcome. This is Dusty Jones, and I'm here to talk to you about something that I learned about called Pascal's Triangle and how it relates to combinations, uh, things that we've talked about earlier when we were looking at different ways of uh, counting the number of uh, either arrangements like permutations or uh, combinations where the order does not matter. And so this thing that I've known as Pascal's Triangle, uh, maybe the next question is, who made this popular? Um, where did this triangle come from? And it's maybe not surprising that it uh, is named for someone whose name is Pascal, Blaise Pascal. He was a French mathematician and philosopher, uh, and he lived in the 17th century. Um, but he's not the person who invented it. He just made it popular in Europe. And so it's known in European places and places that were influenced by Europe as Pascal's Triangle. But really, about 400 years before him, uh, there was a mathematician named Yang Hui who lived in China. And so in the 13th century, uh, he made this popular. Uh, maybe he uh, it should be credited with inventing it. Uh, in China, they may call this Yang Hui's Triangle or uh, whatever the Chinese version, Chinese language version of that is. It's been about 400 years since Pascal made it popular, so maybe somebody today, uh, some influencer, some math influencer can make this more popular and it can get renamed. I don't know. So this Pascal's Triangle, what is it? Or Yang Hui's Triangle. Um, it's an arrangement of numbers and it's in a triangular pattern and it really keeps on going forever. There's no bottom row uh, for Pascal's triangle or for this Yang Hui's triangle. Um, the left side and the right side are all ones. And then these numbers in the middle, uh, we get by doing something kind of special. Uh, it's not too complicated, but it's special. So if you take two numbers that are next to each other, like one plus one, and you add them, in the space below, you write the sum, so 2 goes there. Or on another row here, 10 plus 5 is 15, 15 plus 20 is 35. Uh, that's how Pascal's triangle works. Um, and then we, for each row, we keep putting another 1 on the right end and another 1 on the left end. Uh, these numbers come up in lots of different places in mathematics. Uh, they are the coefficients for... Uh, like a plus b to the nth power. Uh, you might have seen that in an algebra class, like x squared plus 2x plus 1 is x plus 1 squared. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 is x plus 1 to the third power. Um, they also show up in probability, and, and uh, that's why we're talking about them in this class. There's a special way that we name or number or count these rows and these places within the rows. And so the first number, the top, the peak there, is known as the zeroth row. That sounds a little bit weird, but hopefully it will make sense after we talk a little bit more about this. Uh, the row with two ones in it is the first row, and then the second row, the third row, the fourth row, the fifth row, the sixth row. So if I look at the number that shows up just after that one on the left, or the number that shows up just before the one on the right, that number is corresponds with the row number. So there's a six there. This is the sixth row. Um, what else? Oh, the places in the row. So in the third row, the one that has three right here, um, the numbers are, the very left is the zeroth place, then the first place, the second place, and the third place. This sounds kind of weird because we're starting counting with zero, and I'm using this word called zeroth, which I don't even know if it's a real word or not, but that's how I'm pronouncing this. So this is, again, kind of a weird way to count these. I kind of want to say this is the fourth row in the first place, but no. Uh, according to the way that uh, mathematicians have agreed uh, to count these, this is the third row and the zeroth place right here. The fourth row in the fourth place is actually, I'm sorry, the fourth row in the first place is actually this four right here. And the fourth row in the fourth place would be zero, one, two, three. Fourth, play, fourth row, fourth place is right there. Now, I say mathematicians agreed uh, to call them these things, but really it's 
because it makes sense, and I promise I'm almost there uh, getting to that. So now let's talk about uh, Pascal's triangle and how it relates to uh, combinations. And so in order to get to talk about combinations, uh, first I'm going to mention something called uh, binomial experiments. And so in a binomial experiment, there are two possible outcomes, and the outcomes are disjoint. And in general, I'm going to call these outcomes success and failure. But before I go much further, let me give you some examples of um, a binomial experiment. So I might flip a coin, and uh, there's two possible outcomes to flipping that coin. Maybe there's heads and tails. Um, so there's two possible things. I'm saying landing on its side and balancing there is not a possibility. The outcomes are disjoint, which means I can't get both heads and tails. And um, so that's one. Maybe success is heads and failure is tails or the other way around. But in general, I'm going to call them success and failure. Uh, but in the coin flipping scenario, I've got heads or tails. Um, let's think of another another possible example. So in the old days, um, we used to say when a child is born, uh, there's two possible outcomes for the biological sex of the child, male and female. Um, so there's two possible outcomes, and the outcomes are uh, disjoint. A child, the sex, the biological sex of a child could not be both male and female. Now, I realize that I don't know as much about science as I want to. And so I realized that that can get kind of sticky. And then there's also a difference between biological sex and gender. So that's why I say in the old days, this used to be a prime example. Um, but nowadays, maybe it's not so great. Um, let's talk about another example, maybe sports. Um, if you're, if the, your favorite team is going to play a game, uh, there's two possible outcomes. Uh, they could win or they could lose. And um, you can't do both. And you might say, well, what about a tie? Oh, man. Okay. So that would be a trinomial experiment and not a binomial experiment. Bi means, you know, prefix that means two, like in a bicycle. So uh, you'd have to have some setup where your team could not tie. So maybe there's some sort of rules where it keeps going until there's not a tie. Um, and one of those would be success, maybe winning, and the other is failure. Uh, maybe losing. Anyway, those are some examples of binomial experiments. And in general, we've got success and failure. So let's say we're going to do two trials. Maybe we're going to flip the coin twice. Um, or maybe our team's going to play two games. So how many ways can we get no successes if we're going to do this twice? Well, there's only one way, and that's to fail and fail again. And so there's one way to do that. Uh, how many ways can we get one success from these two trials? Well, here, there's a couple of different uh, ways to do that. Uh, there's uh, a f to fail first and then succeed. Maybe you get tails and then heads. Or you can get success first and then failure. So maybe heads and then tails. Both of those ways, both fail success and succeed fail, have... Um, just one success. So there's two ways to do that. These are two different permutations, but the same combination if we're thinking that order doesn't matter. So there's two ways to do that. And then uh, how many ways can we get two successes? Well, we have to get success on the first one and success on the second trial. And so there's only one way to do that. So if I'm counting zero successes, one success, and two successes, um, there's one way, two ways, and one way respectively. Okay, so what does that have to do with Pascal's triangle? Well, here's part of Pascal's triangle, and it goes on forever, so yeah, I know I'm missing part of it. Um, do you see a 1, 2, 1 show up in there? Um, yeah, how about uh, right there on that, there's the 1, 2, 1 there, that's not what I'm looking for, <laughs> there we go, uh, 1, 2, 1 on the what I'm calling the second row. Why am I calling it the second row? Uh, because we're doing two trials right there. And so I want to look at the second row. And this is no successes in the zeroth place, one success in the first place, and two successes in the second place. So that's why I'm numbering those kind of weird. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, 
let's say we're going to do three trials of this flipping a coin or whatever the binomial experiment is. Maybe you're having your favorite uh, pet octopus pick a winner uh, for a soccer game and you want to see if your octopus is right or not. Um, so if we're doing three trials, how many ways can we get zero successes? Well, if you're going to get zero successes, that means you're going to get three failures. And the only way to do that is to fail, fail, fail. Um, and so that's there's one way to do that. Um, how many ways can we get one success? Well, you could succeed first and then fail a couple times, or you could fail, fail, and succeed, or you could get your success in the middle. Um, there's three different ways to do that. Um, and how many ways could we get two successes? Well, that's kind of the same number of ways to get one success, because we could um, and we could just replace our failures with successes and our success with failures. And so um, instead of succeed, fail, fail, we get fail, succeed, succeed. Or instead of fail, succeed, fail, succeed, fail, succeed. And succeed, succeed, fail is kind of the opposite of fail, fail, succeed. So there's three ways to do that. And you probably guessed my next question, how many ways can we get three successes? And the only way to do that is to win, 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 no matter what, what, what. So there's only one way to do that. Uh, let's take a look at these numbers, one, three, three, one, for zero, one, two, and three successes. Do you see those anywhere in Pascal's triangle? Oh, look, there they are right there in the third row, zero, one, two, three, in the third row. And I've numbered those with zero successes, one success, two successes, and three successes. So that's how uh, Pascal's triangle is used as a quick way to get these number of combinations. Now I'm saying number of combinations. Let me bring in some of the other notation that we've had. Um, three, the number of combinations of three things, uh, zero at a time, or three choose zero right there. Uh, there was a whole formula that we had about 3 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 3 minus 0 factorial, uh, but that's also 1. So this is kind of a shortcut to your combination numbers. 3 choose 0 means go to the third row, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0th place, there it is. Um, 3 choose 1 or 3C1, um, that's the, 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 again, there's a formula, 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial uh, times 2 minus 1, fact, or I'm sorry, 3 minus 1 factorial. That gives you 3, but it's also that number right there. And yes, 3C2 is 3, and 3C3 is 1. So those numbers, um, those combination numbers, actually show up in Pascal's triangle. So if you're like, I like the formula with the factorials, use that. Um, if you like Pascal's triangle, use that. I like to use both. For small numbers, I sketch out Pascal's triangle. If I had a big number like 50, uh, choose 25, I'm not going to do Pascal's triangle to the 50th row. I'm going to do the factorial formula. Okay, actually, I'm going to use a calculator for 50, choose 25. Uh, let's wrap this up here and just, uh, just check your understanding. Let's say we're going to do seven trials. How many ways can we get two successes? So I could think about, okay, I need seven things and maybe uh, fail the first five times and then succeed, succeed. I could list out these things, but I can also use Pascal's triangle. So if I'm going to do seven trials, I'm going to go to the seventh row, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to get two successes, um, is that the seven or is that the 21? So I want to get two successes. Remember, the first place is the zeroth place. So this is zero successes. Uh, this is one success. And so 21 should be um, the way to get two successes, or that's 7C2. That's a way to get seven things with two of those being successes. Next question, how many ways can we get three successes? Um, three successes would be, let's see. The seven, I'm still doing seven trials, uh, so I'm on the seventh row, and then three successes, zero, one, two, three. It should be 35. Uh, the number of ways to get four successes is related to the number of ways to get three successes, because if we have seven trials and three successes, that means we had four failures. 
And there's the same number of ways to get four failures as there is to get four successes. And so um, there should be 35 ways to get four successes. And my next, my last question is, how many ways can we get five successes? Well, you can think 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 21. And that 21 also shows up over here with two successes. And hopefully that makes sense that uh, the number of ways to get five successes is the same as the number of ways to get two successes because two plus five is seven. And so there's this symmetry there. All right, I hope that uh, this helps you see how Pascal's triangle gives us the number of combinations and it's a quick way to do that. Also, um, I wanted to say that just because there's the same number of ways to get two successes and five successes, that doesn't necessarily mean that the probability of getting two successes and five successes in seven trials is the same. It would be if the probability of success and failure is the same. Like say you're flipping a fair coin, then the probability that you flip a coin seven times and you get two heads is the same as the probability that you flip a coin seven times and you get five heads. However, if the probability of success and failure are different, let's say your team is playing and they have a 70% chance of winning, so they're a really good team, uh, then the probability of five successes would be a lot greater than the probability of two successes, even though the number of those things is the same. And we'll talk about that in the next video about uh, the binomial distribution.